Well, it's a local story that's now become a national talking point. Last night, 48 Hours aired an hour-long episode on Eric Cola called Desperate Measures. Cola was found guilty last summer of murdering his parents in their Barry Mills home back in 2010 and then forging a $50,000 check in his father's name the day after they were killed. He is still maintaining his innocence. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Just reverberates in your head. Now, newsage Jenna Traum was our lead reporter on Cola's nearly month-long trial and takes a look at what was new in the episode and what 48 Hours left out. Lou, the episode brought us a first look inside Dennis and Myrna Cola's home the day they were found murdered. We also got a peek at some of their home videos from before the tragedy. But there were also a few things 48 Hours left out. Here's a closer look. These home videos showcased on 48 Hours show a happier time for the Cola family. One more, baby girl. That was before Dennis and Myrna Cola were shot to death in their home in 2010. And we're entering from the three-car garage into the kitchen slash mudroom area. This video from the episode Desperate Measures is our first look inside the crime scene the day their bodies were discovered. The show also brought us the first interview with the convicted killer their son, Eric Cola. Months after he was found guilty, he still maintains his innocence. I swear on their honor that I did not kill my mom and dad. But there are a few things the show left out. Cola's alibi was that he was at a shop co looking at plants around the time his parents were killed. But he isn't on the surveillance video. What the show didn't mention was that those surveillance cameras pan back and forth. And in the trial, the defense argued Cola might have been there without being caught on tape. I never attempted to see if a person could drive up during that time period where the camera has panned to the south uh, without being uh, seen, look at, the f look at the flowers briefly and leave, correct? No, we haven't. The show spends a lot of time on the note reading Fixed You. Cola now admits he planted in his own mailbox shortly after his parents were murdered. They even show the dash cam video of him pretending to be upset when law enforcement arrived. Put the Fixed You on it. But they didn't talk about how crucial that fake display of emotion was in the trial. The prosecution argued it proved he could pretend to be upset when he wasn't. You pretended to be crying? I was upset, yes. You pretended to be crying. The defense argued the Colas were killed by a hitman who meant to kill someone else, but got the address wrong and killed the Colas by mistake. A neighbor had been getting death threats, and the show points out if you search that neighbor's address on Google Earth, it takes you to the center of the road where the Cola's house is located. But what the show didn't tell you is that evidence never made it to trial. The judge threw it out as speculation, so the jury didn't know about it when they found Cola guilty. A cable show on the Cola trial also aired last month on the Investigation Discovery Channel, with actors playing Cola and his family. Cola's attorneys are working on putting an appeal together. For now, he's serving two consecutive life sentences without parole. All right, thank you very much, Jenna. Now, we have a uh, poll on our Facebook page where dozens of you have already weighed in on whether the 48 Hours episode made Cola seem guilty or not. Take a look at the results so far. 51% of people say they do think it made him look guilty, 13% say not guilty, and 36% are still not sure. You can still cast your vote by heading to facebook.com newsate news8000.